Now, um, you get, firstly, they, they normally find a big pile of poo, normally rhino, elephant poo and stuff. Then they'll go and find some of them will make their balls right at the top of the poo pile. Others will burrow deep down and then make the, the ball underneath the pile itself. So they'll make it and bury it directly. And then you get these guys, which we call uh, kleptocoprids, which is their, their correct term. Ooh. And what the kleptocoprids do is that they sit around and wait for another dung beetle to have rolled the ball. And then they will attack that guy and then try and steal his ball. The kleptomania. <laughs> I'm sure everybody's familiar with that yeah. word. So yeah, this other guy was trying to steal his ball. He said, yeah, that ball is a bit small. I want a different ball. I want a bigger ball because with your dung beetles, size of ball does matter, especially to the female. Because it shows that that guy is genetically very strong, so that he's capable of rolling that, that big ball. So he will probably be the, the best male or best suitor possible so that she can mate with him and the baby's being born will have the best possible chance of surviving. So the one that's sitting over there, that's the male, slightly larger. That one there is the female. Male normally does all the work, so as you can see, he pushes the ball, the female just hangs on for dear life. <laughs> uh, they will push the ball away until they find a place where there's some nice soft sand. Male will mate with the female, female will deposit an egg in the middle of the ball, and then they'll bury the ball, and then go off and go make another ball. So they will have numerous numbers of balls spread throughout an area. So once the baby hatches, the baby will actually eat the poo as a source of food, but it eats it from the inside outwards. So by the time it's completely eaten up the inside of the ball, it will break free normally next year summer and then the baby will emerge as a fully fledged dung beetle to repeat the process. So these guys are quite important ecologically. You'll find that these guys will remove poos or lots of poo uh, from an area uh, eliminating sicknesses and diseases. Because they estimate that if we didn't have any dung beetles in the world, you'll find that we'll basically be walking in poo at the moment. <laughs> So, yeah, a few meters deep. That will be right across the surface of the earth. Over yeah. there. So, especially in Australia, these guys were introduced over there, especially in the cattle farms, to uh, yeah, remove the poo and stuff over there, thereby eliminating sicknesses and disease. Yeah. Because you often find flies associated with the poo. Yeah. Uh, they will go and fiddle around the poo, then go land on you, go land in your food, mm. etc. So, they will transmit or spread the diseases to humans as well. So these guys are probably one of the most important. Ecological things. Yeah. Yeah, there he starts digging. Oh, cool. You see, he uses his head as a shovel. The flat, the front of the head is quite flat and they've got the serrated edge on the. So when they get to a pile of poo, they can actually use the serrated edge to loosen the poo. And then they will roll it up into a ball. And then the head is flat like a shovel. So then they can dig to try and bury the ball. That's a big one. Yeah. They're trying to get so, into a more comfortable position to dig. Have they already made it at this point, or do they wait until... No, he, they will bury the ball completely. So he's got to still dig a bit more. So that they can lay the egg and then the ball has to be completely under the ground. In order for the baby to survive. Because once the egg hatches, you find that there's this big white larva. It's like a big white worm over there, which is a good source of protein for other animals. So you find that uh, birds and various other animals, will, if they find the balls lying around over here, will try and break open break them open and eat the, the, the larvae okay. over there. So they're trying to eliminate that these balls are being found, so they will bury it to ensure that the baby gets the best possible chance to survive. Okay. You can see, he goes and measures a bit, yeah. see how much I still need to dig, how wide the hole needs to be. <laughs> yeah. You'll slowly see that the ball will slowly but surely you take time-lapse photos, it will take him probably about an hour or so to, to bury the ball completely. Depending on how soft the sand is. Okay, also something interesting is while we're walking over here, you hear a lot of birds calling at the moment. So birds are quite active, but you find that the birds are more active in the mornings and the evenings than in the midday. Mm. Or in the 12 o'clock at day. Why do you think that would be? Yes. Okay, it's always logical. First try the logical answer. Yeah, it not doesn't answer. work. Okay. But you'll find that uh, the birds call because as it is now, it is cooler. Sound travels a lot better in cooler weather. So the birds, especially the birds that are calling, are mostly males. 